Today I'm here with Kyle Wagner, who does just about everything in terms of the uh, fly fishing and uh, upland hunting world over in Wyoming. How's it going today, Kyle? I'm doing well, Matt. How are you? Not too bad. Um, Good. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time today. Um, Absolutely. It's we're gonna, my honor. We're going to get into um, a story that I'm actually currently writing about a trip the Cubby Rise crew took to uh, visit you over in Nebraska to hunt prairie chickens last fall. But before I get into that, I want to um, kind of let readers and uh, viewers of this video know a little bit about you and what you're up to in terms of your businesses in Wyoming. Okay. Um, so uh, about five years ago, uh, my wife and I, we, uh, we moved uh, from Nebraska, actually, uh, to uh, Lander, Wyoming. And we started uh, the Lander Fly Shop and Guide Service. We've got a little retail shop down on Main Street. And um, we also uh, do all wild bird hunts in uh, Wyoming. And we also do some in Southwest Nebraska where we had you guys out. So um, it's, been, it's been a roller coaster ride, but um, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, we absolutely love Lander. It's, uh, it's a sportsman's paradise out here for fishermen, uh, bird hunters, and big game hunters. It's, uh, it's fantastic. So uh, still love to go back to Nebraska a couple of weeks of the year and, and do some guiding, but um, Wyoming is uh, Wyoming's pretty special. Let's talk about your fly fishing operation real quick. Um, where do you fish? What species do you chase? How does that all work? So here in Lander, um, we, we utilize our local waters, which is the, um, the middle fork of the Poposia and the north fork of the Poposia. And then we have some smaller uh, freestone rivers in regards to uh, the Sweetwater, um, the east fork of the wind and the Wiggins fork that we really died on. Um, most of the uh, species that we go after are, you know, just your, your rainbows and your tra uh, brown trout. Um, we do have some really, really good cutthroat property around as well. And then, um, you know, we get to utilize the Wind River mountain range, which is really known for their, uh, their tiger trout and their golden trout. So uh, the tiger trout has just been introduced into a few lakes, but the golden trout is, is really a bucket list for a lot of trout fishermen that come out here uh, that go into the wind, uh, the wind River Range to try and find those goldens up in the higher mountain lakes. So, Is, is that like a hike in? Can you? Like, it is. It is. Uh, a lot of guys uh, hike in. A lot of guys uh, take in. Uh, it's a big thing around here with llamas and pack goats and and mules and donkeys and yeah there's the amount of lakes that are up in the Wind River Mountain ranges I don't know if they even really have a solid count on how many up there but there's uh, hundreds and hundreds of them. Hmm, that sounds awesome and in terms of upland hunting we hunted prairie chickens with you in Nebraska but I know you do a lot of other uh, upland hunts in Wyoming close to where you're at um, what what are you up to over there and what species you you know, the, um, really the only, the only two species, well, three species that, that I chase that aren't in Wyoming are the prairie chicken, uh, the bobwhite quail, and we do not have any sharp tails around the area, but we have an abundance of sage grouse, uh, roughed grouse, uh, we hunt the dusky grouse, and then we have an amazing population of Hungarians, um, so Huns and Chuckers. So... And then our season doesn't run quite as long as anywhere else, but uh, believe it or not, we have a vast number of pheasants out here. So um, totally different kind of pheasant hunting out here uh, than what you would see um, in the Midwest down, you know, um, we're, no CRP, no irrigation ground out here. Uh, we hunt them in draws and we hunt them in sloughs and it's, uh, it's a whole different ball game of hunting pheasants, but uh, there are quite a few around. So tell us about your dogs. What kind of dogs are you running on your string? So, you know, for the, for the last decade, I've had strictly German short hair pointers and uh, I'm just, just absolutely love the breed. Um, but over about the last four or five years, uh, I was introduced to um, the field Gordon setter and um, they have really um, kind of stole our heart. And, 
Um, so we have, uh, we have four now of the field Gordons. We just ended up having a litter of puppies. Uh, was not a planned litter, but uh, we ended up with 10 very, very healthy puppies. We just got rid of all of them. So um, all of my dogs will be in tip top shape come hunting season. Um, but yeah, between the German short hairs and the Gordon setters, they, they keep us, uh, they keep us pretty busy. And I, and I enjoyed hunting with your dogs when we were in Nebraska, especially happy, happy. Thank you. Your, your GSP is a dandy for sure. Um, yeah, happy. He's, he's a kind of a special breed, you know, he's, he's turning six this year and he, he's just entered his prime last season. And, and we're so proud of him because we raised him, you know, we had, um, we had his mom and his dad and we raised a litter of pups and, and kept him out of it. And he is uh, not only one of the best hunting dogs I've ever been around, but he is just his personality and his, and, and hence his name happy. He's just, uh, just an overall great dog. So. And I'm writing the article right now about our, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be published later this fall, which I'm excited about. And the article's got a lot in, in it. And, you know, one of the reasons why we do these video interviews is to sort of um, tell the behind the scenes, you know, get to know the people involved in the story. We're going to be talking about your dogs and um, hunting prairie chickens and the techniques and, and the, the lodging and the food and everything that went involved with the hunt. But, um, but for those, have, those folks that haven't done it before, sort of set the scene of the landscape of, of hunting in that area for prairie chickens. So... So in Southwest Nebraska, um, people that would, that would think that you're, you're, you know, you're near the Kansas, Colorado border, they're going to think more of just kind of a flat landscape. And it's really not. It's kind of the high plains area. Uh, you've got rolling prairie hills, uh, just vast amounts of ground um, where these cattle ranchers run their cows. And um, lucky for me, um, Nick and Corey Fowler and, Brandon and Kelly Kenning, uh, dear, dear friends of ours, um, they, they are just such stewards of the land and they, they take such great pride in their property and that just automatically rolls over into the, uh, the wonderful population of wild birds that we have to hunt. And um, it, it helps to have a lot of property to hunt these prairie chickens because uh, you find them out in in large amounts of prairie land, and it is really kind of looking for a di uh, a needle in the haystack. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not it's not an easy hunt by any means, and it's uh, you're 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 not only dealing with with the heat, um, you're dealing with uh, you know just the amount of walking that you have to do, um, but it is such a rewarding hunt in my opinion so they're such a fascinating bird mm -hmm. yeah let's talk about the bird specifically um i know some some upland hunters consider hunting prairie chickens sort of like a bucket list type hunt you know mm -hmm. it, it's not as common as as a lot of others and you can't find them everywhere either you got to go to specific places to to find prairie chickens but for, in terms of the bird what what do you what do you see as unique about prairie chickens the unique thing about the prairie chicken, honestly, is is how it can live in the habitat that it actually lives in. I mean, you know, when you're when you're dealing with pheasants, um, you know, you're dealing with thick cover, large brush, um, plenty of escape routes to get from predators. Uh, they're just not out in the open. These prairie chickens are just in the middle of a prairie, and um, they they live out there year round through snowstorms through rainstorms through everything hardly any cover um they rely on their legs and you know themselves to stay warm and to stay um uh, alive from all the predators that are out there so it's just a really really neat bird in because of of its hardiness i guess i would say and, and how how tough a bird it is mm -hmm. so not only is it a tough bird that that lives in tough conditions but it's a really tough bird to hunt so and and when you're talking about the habitat and i know this because i was there but mm -hmm. um what's the habitat like is it is it pasture lands is it high grass short grass where, where do so you 
so actually, um, believe it or not, the prairie chicken is its main defense is its eyes. So on really big rain years and when ranchers can't keep the grass grazed down, you're, you, would, you would think that you're going to find prairie chickens in the taller grass. That is not the case. So this year, especially, or last year when we did our hunt, especially it was a rain, rainy season out there. And we really had to be specific on where we hunted because certain areas, the grass was too tall to hold prairie chickens. They like the grass grazed. They like it short so they can see. So um, our first day of hunting, we didn't have much luck because we were in taller grass areas. And then, you know, our second and third days, we, we had phenomenal hunts because we were able to find where the cows had grazed the grass down and uh, we were able to get into bird after bird. So it was, it, it's a, for me, it's a, it's a learning experience every time I, I go after them. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you find them out in the middle of a rolling pasture with the grass maybe being three, four inches tall. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where those birds are at and they can camouflage themselves better than anything I've ever seen. So that's, yeah, that's interesting. So, so what's your, when you take out a group like us, um, mm -hmm. what's your game plan in terms of hunting technique or, or, well, um, you know, I, I rely on, on, on my, my friends that actually own the property. Um, they do a very good job. They, um, they move cattle a lot and, Prairie chickens are pretty, um, they're kind of a creature of habit. As long as you do not bother them, um, they will continue to roost and nest in the exact same location. So lucky for me, uh, I've got some dear friends that, that kind of make notes on where they've seen chickens while they're moving cattle. And that's kind of where we start. You know, we start early in the morning because the, the heat is so bad. Um, and we kind of just fan out. Um, and on, on honestly, with, with prairie chickens, a few more dogs on the ground is really not going to hurt anything. So we have a lot of ground to cover. And um, I think we were running maybe three, four dogs at a time uh, when, we were, uh, when we were real successful. So um, we kind of just fan out and, and start marching across the prairie. <laughs> and, and I remember that first group we ran into. Um, we were... We were walking, we'd been walking quite a ways, and I think you said something along the lines of predicting that, that the next crest of that hill looks like it might be a good spot. And mm -hmm. sure, sure enough, I think Happy went on point and we walked up there and there was probably at least half a dozen, half a dozen birds. Well, you know, it, uh, a lot of the time wind is in your favor with prairie chickens. They, they do not like the wind, they like to be out of the wind. So if you if you kind of have a, an idea of which the w direction the wind is coming out of, you're going to find them on the opposite side of that hill. Um, and like anything, you're going to find them around water. Um, so we just kind of used our, kind of used a little common sense and, and, and the dogs. I mean, that's, that was the key by all means. And this whole, this whole sport that we do, the dogs are the key to anything. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the story is going to be action packed. And, and one of the, the unique things about the story is all the people that were there. We had a, a good group of, of guys. We had the Cubby Rise crew. Yep. We had, we had you and Nick Fowler was, was around. Yep. Um, Sim Watley from Duck Camp was there. Absolutely. And uh, Fred Stivers, the artist. Yeah. There. Frederick, Frederick was amazing. Yep. Yeah. Talk yeah. About first time bit. I ever had an artist, first time I ever had an artist on a hunt and, and I would do it time and time again. It was, uh, did not know what to uh, expect uh, when, when uh, we heard that he was coming, but he was a breath of fresh air. And, and the amount of art that he did on so many different things was, was just, it was so memorable. That would be something I will not forget. So, I mean, he even, he was sketching on cow bones that he found in the field. Yeah, bleached out cow bones. He drew a picture of Happy on a bleached out cow bone with a pencil. Um, Nick still has this beautiful, beautiful uh, drawing of a prairie chicken uh, on, a, on a beer coaster that he has hanging up in the lodge. I mean, it was, I believe you got a bone as well with your, with your setter on it. Yeah, I did. Um, and then over the year afterwards, I have gotten a watercolor um, from him that uh, it was a photograph uh, that Nick took um of happy rolling on the ground and he did a watercolor for me and, and mailed it to me 
So I, I, yeah, I just, the, the, the art will definitely keep those memories intact. So do you still have that? Was it a shoulder blade? Bone? I do. Happy? I do. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it's, it is uh it's, it's a treasure. It sits in, in a really neat spot in our house and, and uh, we, we, we sure like to show it off. So. And some people say that um, prairie chickens aren't very good to eat. Well, but, but Sim, Sim proved us, Sim, Sim proved us completely incorrect on that deal. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he made this, this Louisiana dish, um, a prairie chicken fricassee. And I have to say it was one of the best things I've ever eaten. So we had really good food throughout the whole trip, but that, that prairie chicken fricassee really, I mean, it, it kind of just sealed the deal on, on what a fun hunt that was. So yeah, it was good. And it's that, you know, the artwork by, by Fred and also um, a little bit of the food stuff from Sim is actually going to be in the story as well. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to have yeah. that recipe and maybe another one. Um, to accompany the story in Cubby Rise too, so we're excited about that. Um, that's 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 that, that's awesome. Yeah, those those were those were very memorable things that the food and the and the art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a fun fun trip for sure. Um, and we're gonna wrap this up now, but I'm curious to know how how is your fall shaping up? Do you have people you know come? it's like I um like I've told some people it's 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 kind of wrapping up slow. This the COVID nineteen is kind of has slowed everybody down on um, on on. Uh, really, really firming up some trips, which is, you know, it comes with the, with the territory of what's going on in the world right now. But um, we're starting to see more fishing trips go out, which I'm hoping will be a sign of, of more bird hunts to come for the fall and the winter. Um, but, you know, family's healthy. Uh, we have all of our dogs are healthy. We had a beautiful litter of 10 puppies. Um, we really can't dwell on, 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 you know, all the negative right now. So, um, my, my summer's looking good. It looks as if we're going to have a beautiful, uh, a beautiful fall. The bird numbers are, are up according to the DOW. So, um, you know, if I, if I get to do some guiding, wonderful, if not, I'm, I'm definitely going to get to do some hunting, which yeah. will definitely be a change of pace for me. <laughs> yeah. so. well, that's good. And you, you know, what, what better place to socially distance than maybe on a, on a trout stream or, or oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're, we're, when you only have a half a million people in your whole state, it's not real hard to social distance. So it's good um, place to be for sure. Good place to be. Absolutely. For, for anybody that wants to get a hold of you, maybe has some questions after they read this story or wants to know more about what you do for, for fly fishing and upland hunting, what's the best way to, to get a hold of you? So um, they can get a hold of me at um, wind river wing shooting at gmail.com is my uh, email address. Uh, they can find us on uh, Instagram at Wind River Wing Shooting as well. And then uh, my, my phone number that kind of handles everything from fishing to hunting is um, area code 307-438-3439. Uh, and, and people can reach out to me via telephone. They can send me a text, uh, get a hold of me uh, via email. Uh, you can even get a hold of us through the websites at um, windriverwingshooting.com and landerflyshop.com. So uh, quite a few ways to get a hold of us, and we'd be happy to answer any questions anybody might have. Okay. All right. Thanks for your time today, Kyle. Um, thanks, thanks, Matt. It was great seeing you again. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for the hunt last, last year, and uh, thanks for the help with the article. We're looking forward to seeing it in print here coming this fall. So Absolutely, buddy. Have you guys take care. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Take care.